Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I use uh, the collections feature in Ableton Live um, to organise my entire Ableton library. This fits in really well with the way I work. Um, this may not work for you, uh, but if it does then I hope this is helpful. The thing that always annoyed me about Ableton Live prior to version 10 um, was that if you wanted, say, a reverb effect and you didn't know which particular reverb effect you wanted to use, you had to look in three different places. You had to look in your um, stock Ableton plugins, you had to look in Max for Live devices, and then you'd look in um, your plugins folder for any VSTs or audio units. This annoyed me because often I want to add, say, a reverb effect or a delay effect, and I don't really know which kind of one I want to use. I want to look through what I've got first. This method that I use for collections enables you to group uh, various types of devices together in one place. So if we look at how I've got my collections laid out at the moment, um, I've got drums, instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, user presets, core presets and samples. So in the drums, um, say I want an acoustic kit. I've got a few acoustic kits and they're all grouped together there. I've got the session drums that come with Ableton and I've got some, some one of my own. I've got a couple of contact libraries. Then I've got all my battery based kits together, battery from Native Instruments. Um, I've got some chopped up brakes. I've got various kind of all in one drum machines. And then I've got electronic kits. Um, I've got a couple of external drum machines that I use. Uh, I've got Native Instruments Machine and a few different regularly used ones for those. Uh, and then there's percussion. So again, I've got the Native Ableton stuff, the Latin percussion, and a few other uh, contact libraries, Max for Live devices. And then I've got like pitch drum effects as well. Uh, then in the instruments, um, these are split up into external instruments that I have, a couple of synths, um, FX-based instruments. Uh, I've got real instruments categorised into different folders, so I've got the Ableton Live bass and a couple of the Native Instruments contact libraries. And this sort of goes into brass, guitar, keys, etc., uh, then I've got audio effects. This is the thing that I find the most helpful. As I mentioned before, if you're after one particular kind of delay, you've got to look in three different places normally. Um, here I've got all my delay effects grouped together, which is a mixture of stock Ableton effects and VSTs. And the same goes for reverb. I've got VST, uh, Max for Live device, VST and even a reactor ensemble in there as well, as well as the um, native Ableton Live effects. Same goes for MIDI effects, I've got these all split up, you get the picture. I've looked at various YouTube videos on collections, and I haven't really seen anyone doing it this way uh, with organizing everything into folders of different types. And this is the great thing about uh, collections, is that you're not limited to just single effects or instruments. You can add whole folders into there as well. And these come directly from the user library. So it takes a little while to set this up in the first place. Uh, you've got to do everything through your user library first, and then you map uh, the folders that you've created and the effects and the instruments that you've dropped into these folders. Uh, you just basically map them to the particular colour that you want to assign it to. So as an example of how to do this, uh, first of all I've gone into my um, user library. I find this easier doing this through uh, Explorer or Finder. Um, so we basically show that in Finder. Um, and in here I organised all my folders first. You do get empty folders um, in there by default which Ableton puts in there for you, uh, which I've actually deleted and just replaced these all with my own folders. So in the delay, um, I've basically got all my delay units there. Now this is easy enough to do with stock Ableton plugins and with Max for Live devices. 
you basically get the device that you want um, and you drag it and drop it into the folder. With VSTs and audio units, it's a little different. I'll show you why. If we enable the plugins there, and let's have a look through the VST plugins. Now, this is another thing that annoyed me. All the VST plugins are basically lumped into one place, and these are a mixture of instruments and effects. If you're like me, you may have had Ableton Live for years, and your library of VSTs and audio units has grown somewhat. And this, the bigger it gets, the more confusing it gets to sort of search through and find the thing that you want. Okay, so let's look at how we can do this with a virtual instrument. Um, let's get massive. Now, what you can't do is just to drag massive into the correct folder. Uh, here, I'd like to put it in um, instruments, synths, and digital. And you can see I've already got it there. Let's just delete that for now. So you can't just drag massive in there. It's just not going to let you do it. The way around this is you create a group for Massive instead, which Ableton will let you put into your user library. So press Command and G or Control and G. And you can see there that it's created um, a group for Massive. Massive functions in exactly the same way, but it's just inside an instrument rack. So what we can do here, we can just rename it. So Command and R, Control and R, and we'll rename that to Massive. And all we need to do is to drop that into the user library. Now, because I have linked the uh, top level folder to a color, everything inside that folder of synths is automatically sent to the synth section in the collections. So as we can see, everything there mirrors what I have in my user library. So the other good thing here is that you can map uh, commonly used parameters uh, to macros in your instrument rack. So let's say we want to map um, filter wavetable positions. We can just right click map to macro. And then the great thing is if we drop this into our user library again and overwrite what we've done before, the next time you load up Massive, you've already got your parameters mapped to macros, which is great if you're a push user. It just makes things that bit simpler. So again, all we need to do, load up the VST, um, group it, and drop it into the folder that you think it's most appropriate for. And there's no limit here into how many folders you can create. Um, there were a few complaints when collections first came out uh, that there weren't enough colors. The, the, you've only got seven basically to choose from. But using folders means that you now have uh, an infinite amount of uh, subcategories for any of these collection categories that you have. Another thing that's worth pointing out as well, you'll notice here that I've got a samples folder, which are all the samples on my external hard drive. It's not just the user library that you can map, uh, you can also map anything that you add into your places as well. So what I've done here is I've added a folder um, and I've basically gone to my uh, samples folder on my external hard drive and I've added that into here. And what you can do when you go into this, much like the user library, you can assign whole folders um, into a particular collection color. So in this case, I've created one called samples and I've added all these into the samples folder here. So this mirrors what I have in my places. It's not just the folders in the places as well. Um, you can also map anything in your packs as well. So here, I've got all my standard Ableton presets. So let's look at, say, uh, devices, um, instruments, analog. So all the analog presets are here as well. All I've done here is I've gone into packs, uh, core library, and I've mapped all the types of folders in the core library 
um, into the core presets collection. It's just so that as well as the uh, folders I've created here, I do also have very easy access to all the core Ableton presets as well. The last thing I want to talk about is that you can use any of your VST presets and save those as uh, separate instruments in your audio library as well. So as an example, um, I have quite a lot of battery kits. Uh, I've got the Gold Baby ones, for example. What I've done here is let's take uh, this one as an example. Let's just load up the first one. What I've done here, I've gone through each of the um, presets for this kit. And I've created, uh, I basically just saved it uh, as a separate preset each time. So if we go back to user library, um, I've created a folder here for, for this particular pack. And I've basically loaded up a preset, rename it here, and then drop it into the user library. Load up the next preset rename it, drop it into the user library. This took a while <laughs> to do. Uh, this took me several hours. Uh, but it basically means that you've got commonly used presets, or all of your presets if you like, they're already in your Ableton library to choose from. You don't have to load up the instrument and then search through the presets that way. You can see everything all together in one place. And this is basically what this system is good at. As I mentioned before, You'd normally have three different places to look for particular types of effects. Um, and here you've got everything grouped together in one place. Okay, I hope this is useful to you. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.